Rosinante. It's Spanish for workhorse. I like it. Rossi, woohoo! She is one beautiful lady. Rossi is his girlfriend. She purrs like a kitty at 12 G's. No, no, no. It's a badass ship. I mean, there's no two ways about it. Rosinante. Flying is more important to Alex than breathing. You give Alex an incredibly souped up, sexy, beautiful, powerful gunship like the Rasinante. That is his soulmate. He becomes emotionally attached to that beautiful lady. He has to be flying or he's not happy. It's so different for Holden and his crew. This new ship is sleek and high tech Martian technology. And it's kind of everything that they wanted or you know, hoped for out of a ship and completely different than what they're used to. I think for all of us, it was one of our favorite episodes because as you know, if you've been watching up to this point, everything's been so intense. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, patch him up. We're in crisis, we need to survive, we're gonna die, we're not gonna die. <sighs> so this was a chance for us to all breathe and show different sides of our characters that maybe you haven't seen before. I think they're all pretty relieved to uh, not have to be fixing everything all the time with maybe the exception of Naomi. Show me drive diagnostics and core levels. And it's really funny to see that side of Naomi where she's just like, it's new, it's all new. What am I supposed to do here? It sure beats the buggers that we've been on in the past. There's nothing to fix. What am I supposed to do? She feels rendered useless in that moment. I think all of us are incredibly happy and you know, for Holden in particular, just to have a decent cup of coffee, finally, after five episodes. I can't say that in real life it was the best cup of coffee I've ever had, oh. but I tried to imagine it and do my best with that. Survivors of the Donninger, my name is Fred Johnson, Director of Operations at Tycho Station. Fred Johnson is a really, really interesting character. Isn't he some kind of big shot for the OPA? Yeah, what does it matter? What we wanted to do in episode five was a really unusual introduction of the characters. It starts 11 years ago, and you're watching these belters who've taken over a station. They ultimately get blown up, and then you see at the end of it, the person who's in charge of the UN forces that blew up the belters is Fred Johnson. You've chosen to remain anonymous. I can only hope you have no hostile intent. I think Holden ultimately trusts Fred. I'm not sure he trusts him. I think trust is probably a strong word. She does not trust Fred Johnson. When they cross paths with Fred Johnson, you don't know if you're if you're getting a helping hand or, or if you just jumped into bed with the devil. Safe journey. Show me Julie's projected flight path. Go 3D. Miller begins to have sort of a crisis of conscience here. He is starting to smell a bigger conspiracy going on beyond what he can see. You know, everything going on out there, all this shitstorm that we're in, it's all got to do with her, Julie Mao. He's getting scared. He doesn't know exactly where and, and how far up it goes. Maybe this is above your pay grade. He's a contrarian also. It's like people are saying, don't look into the case, stop poking around. Stop poking around. He's like, well, maybe I should keep poking around. He is now determined, the more people tell him, don't look for Julie Mao, the more he's going to look for her. And the bigger the conspiracy he's starting to uncover. 